again, it's Oscar, and today I would like to show you the web server, which is built-in feature of our Mitsubishi Electric PLCs. And we have two different solutions here. The first one is the system web page, which is made for basic diagnostics of the control system. And the second is the user web page, which can work as a simple visualization for our PLC. In this episode, I will focus on the first case, system web page. It's ready-made solution. All you have to do to make it running is just a few clicks in GX Works 3. And you get access to the state of controller, inputs, outputs, alarms, events, and values of all registers. And you can even overwrite these values. And it's actually the web page. It's based on the web technologies like HTML. So any device with web browser like PC, mobile phone or tablet can easily access this page. So, okay, enough talking, let's jump into software. So first, we need to activate the web server on our PLC. So in the new project, we go to Ethernet port settings and in the basic settings, we just need to configure the IP address and the subnet mask to be able to connect to our PLC. Then we go uh, to application settings and we look for web server settings. Here, first, we need to choose to use the web server. Uh, the host station port can remain 80, but we need to create the new account. So we click here, we click register, and we uh, I will pick uh, the admin name. I will choose some password. And then we click OK. And we have to specify three things. First is write device, uh, then authority for window display and initial display window. So if we would like to make the account that can change some values on PLC, we have to change this to enable. Then we choose if we want to uh, access, uh, give access only to the system web page or only user web page, or we have admin here. So I would like to give uh, the access to both displays. Then I just have to specify which uh, display will be the starting one that will appear right after uh, opening the web server. It will be system web page in my case. Now we can check if uh, all the parameters that we gave here are OK. So we click check. No error found. Perfect. So now we can click apply. It's important. And then we can upload our program to our PLC. I click select all and then execute. OK. And we just wait. Uh, for our program to upload to PLC. Okay, the project is already uploaded, so let's use my PC, which is already connected to the PLC, to show you how it works. But remember that you can use any device that will be connected to our PLC to access the web server. To access our web server, we just put IP address of our PLC into any web browser and then the login window will appear. Here I put the username, so admin, and also my password, and then click login. The first window we will see is module information. Here we will find the basic data of our PLC, like model name, serial number, or firmware version. We can switch also to device batch monitor. This is pretty interesting. We can see values of all our registers in PLC divided by the type of the register. So for example, we can see all the X registers in one table, or we can switch to M registers, for example. A bit more convenient way to see uh, the value in our process is to use watch. In this case, we can specify particular uh, devices, particular registers that we want to observe. So, for example, D0 and D20. 
another tab is CPU Diagnostics. In this tab, we can see all the errors that will occur on our PLC. In our case, no errors, so good for us. Another one is Event History. We can see all the events that happened on uh, our PLC, like for example any changes in memory, like creation of new folders uh, or files. All of these uh, actions we will see in this screen. We have also access log here, so we can see the history of access to our web server. So, as you can see during recording this video, uh, I was logging a lot as my admin account here, and you can see all the history here on this screen. The last uh, tab here is user web page, uh, but this will be the topic for the next episode. Right now, I would like to come back for a second to a, a watch window because we can not only uh, check the values of our registers there, but when I open GXWorks 3 uh, in parallel here, you will see that I can also overwrite the values of registers. So for example, I will put uh, 10 for register D0 and you can immediately see this value in GXWorks. It works also the other way around, so when I will change the value in watch in GXWorks, we will see this in our web server. The same functionality you can find in device batch monitor. So, for example, when I will change D0 for 10, and for example D1 a register I will change for 20, click set, you can see immediately these values in GXWorks 3. Of course, again, when I will change those values in GXWorks, I will see them like in a second or right now in our web server. So I think it's quite a lot of functions in return of just a few clicks in our software. And remote access to such essential data can be a lifesaver for maintenance departments, for integrators and machine producers. In the next episode, I will show you the user web page. So stay tuned and see you there. Bye.